Good morning. If we could find a place to sit, we'll start this morning's service. Thank you for being in the Lord's house this morning. Is it good to be in God's house this morning? Amen. 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 Please be mindful of a of, uh, number of people that are sick. There are also uh, people in the hospital and uh, recovering from things. So uh, there'll probably be more announcements about that a little later on. But uh, hold them up in prayer. When I was a teenager, how many remember being a teenager? All right. I rarely ever heard the word awesome. Just wasn't in our vernacular. Maybe words like hip, groovy. Well, yes, I'm dating myself. Thank you. That was before my time. Yes. The word today, awesome, is obviously a very powerful and powerfully used word, both in the secular world and in the spiritual world. I got to looking that up. The Lord hit me with awesome, awesome, awesome this morning. And if you look at the word awesome, would you believe it is not in the King James Version Bible? It's not there. But it is in the New King James and other, and other versions, 38 times actually. But if you look at the word awesome, it kind of translated into fear, to be afraid, to stand in awe, to revere or reverence, to honor, to respect, astonishment. And we usually use that word here in the body with awesome God. Is he an awesome God? Amen. When God appeared to Moses in the burning bush... <laughs> Moses hid his face and trembled before the true and living, awesome God. When Isaiah saw him, the awesome Lord, in his glory and majesty, he cried, Woe is me. <laughs> and when the risen Christ appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus, Saul, all he could do was lay on the ground and tremble in his Lord and Savior's awesome presence. That's where I want to be this morning. That's where we all want to be this morning, in His awesome presence. Amen? Amen? If you would stand, get ready to get in His awesome presence. Amen? Amen? Let's get in an awesome encounter with the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Pastor Mike. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a story in the Bible that's one of my favorite stories. And uh, it was a... Uh, situation that uh, a friend of Jesus was uh, dying and he found out about it but yet he stayed where he was at and uh, there for a little while because he was busy doing the father's business and then uh, when he got to where his friend was his friend had been dead for anybody can tell me how long four days, four days. I mean know oh, when even when God's on your time is four days late. How many of you know he's always on time? And the sisters and those around him saying, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. Let me ask you something. Uh, what about your situation? Has, have you got a report and you've been praying about something and all of a sudden it seems like maybe the situation's gotten worse? And before that situation or before it, it, it moved or progressed to that part, uh, you, you were thinking in your heart and in your mind, well, that's possible, and I'm praying for that. But yet, somehow now fear has gripped your heart and doubt has begun to come because you're thinking, well, I'm not too sure that God is going to do that. How many of you know that God is a God of His Word? His Word is true. Amen? And how many of you know that when He says something, He means it? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and just tell him it's not too late. Amen? It's not too late. He's still, he's still God. Listen, if you're, if you're saved, if you're born again this morning and you know it, 
and you remember when he called you, would you do this? Put your hands together as loud as you can. Let's just bless him. Come on. He's worthy. Hallelujah.
Bless you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Lift your hands toward heaven. Thank you, Jesus, that we're redeemed. Thank you, Jesus, that we're healed. Thank you, Jesus, that we're delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross, Lord. This morning as we're just worshiping the Lord, God, this morning we lift up a woman by the name of Arlene to you. 
the Lord who's been diagnosed with a, a mass, Lord, on an ovary, facing surgery. And Father, I come against fear in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come against sickness. And Father, we come against any disease. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you're our healer. We thank you, oh God, that you can touch her. So I pray right now, Lord, as we just agree together. You said, Lord, as we agree together as touching one thing and ask that it shall be done. And so, God, we're asking that you touch this precious sister. And God, would you lift her today and would you heal her today? And we just give you honor. We give you glory. Father, today, today, Lord, we lift up Ed Graham to you. Lord, we thank you for Ed and Stephanie. God, I thank you that your word is true. And God, we're standing on your word. And Lord, we choose to believe your report. And God, we pray for strength. And we pray, oh God, that faith will continue to arise in he and Steph. Lord, touch his body. Touch his mind. And Father, Lord, I speak to that liver in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we command it according to your word to just rejuvenate. And to be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak to the mind and to the eyesight and those things that have been damaged, oh God, by TIAs. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're restoring everything that the enemy's tried to take. Lord, I lift up every individual this morning facing sickness. And God, I thank you. Thank you, oh God for your cross. I thank you for your stripes. Thank you for the price that was paid for us. You are a glorious, wonderful, mighty God. There is none like you. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Savior 
filled with wonder, such awestruck wonder at the mention of your sing again. We're filled with wonder, such awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Sing that one more time. Lord, we're filled with wonder, such awestruck wonder, Jesus, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath in living water, such a marvelous mystery. Be 
elders, angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. As fear and doubt come against your soul, has your faith been sorely tried? Just lift up your head, for here cometh your help. It is Jesus for you. He has died. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your soul. this morning. Amen. God is good. You may be seated in the house of God this morning. For he is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. You can stay in God's presence all day. He's so good. All the kids can be dismissed to kids church. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we give you thanks today, Lord. God, your mercies are new every morning, Lord. God, we thank you today, Lord, as we have come to your house. We rejoice in your name, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you honor. God, I thank you that new life comes from you and begins in you, Father. God, that, God, when we awake every single morning, God, that we can breathe in your, God, your air, your breath, Lord, and that we can proclaim, Lord Jesus, as as we just worship, that we can arise and we can be healed in the name of Jesus, Lord, that, God, our spirits can be made new every day, Lord, that our physical health Lord, can be made new every day. Father, that, God, we can set our eyes upon you, Lord God, before the, the feet of our, our, our feet hit the floor, Lord God, that we can, God, adjust our focus to you, Lord Jesus. 
and that, God, you'll meet us there. And, God, we give you thanks for that today, Lord. God, we give you praise today, Father. God, you are truly worthy. There's none like you today, Jesus. God, there's nobody on heaven and earth, Lord God, that deserves the praise, God, that we can give. And we give you thanks for that. Just turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. Amen. Amen. I want our ushers to come forward this morning. As we continue to worship, we're going to give unto the Lord as they're coming forward. We bless God for his faithfulness in our lives. We bless God for his provision in our lives. Amen. There's no way we could ever outgive God. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you for the offering. God, we bless you for every gift that is given. Lord, we bless you today, Father. Lord, and we just ask that your kingdom would be built in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, you may go ahead. I want to thank everybody uh, for your faithfulness as you give this morning. Just some updates and announcements real quick. Uh, first, I just want to congratulate Joel and Jay as they had a great day le- yesterday at the farm. If you got to make it out there um, at the open house, we appreciate them and their faithfulness. Joel promised me that I could come work on and use the tractor sometime soon, so <laughs> I got to grease it up first. So, uh, But if you want to ever get involved in, in helping plant or weed uh, the weeds or uh, harvest vegetables. You see that man right there, and he will will gladly uh, take your help. And so uh, that's an, an awesome ministry, and we're thankful for that. Also, want to uh, just remind everybody and announce about next Sunday uh, all the activities that are going on. Um, I'm not sure if Miss Vicky is in the sanctuary at this moment, um, but she there she is in the back. Miss Vicky, wave your hand so everyone can see you. Miss Vicky has been I've. I've personally asked her to help coordinate and uh, help everybody with the chili cook-off. If you've signed up to, uh, to participate as uh, one of the contestants or per- people that will make chili, you want to see Miss Vicki, and she will give you all the details that you need, and uh, she'll give you all the instructions. So please uh, do what she tells you to do, because I've asked her to tell you to do it. Um, amen. When she needs helpers also. We are uh, with Curtis and um, some other people Saturday to just kind of set things up. It uh, won't take long if we have enough volunteers to help to set up. I need about two to three more uh, of those pop-up tents. We have two of them. If you have a 10 by 12 or a 12 by 12, bring that Saturday. We'll set those up. And uh, as you're coming in on Sunday morning, uh, hopefully we'll have some volunteers that will help park. Uh, If you're going to be one of the trunk or treaters, just follow their directions and they'll tell you where to park and uh, they'll be helping park everybody else. So um, we want you to invite a guest. In your bulletin this morning, there was a flyer and uh, that wasn't just a reminder for you because we've been announcing it, but that's for you to take home and maybe give to a neighbor or give to a friend, somebody you've been inviting to church. So I don't want that to be hung on your refrigerator. I want that on somebody else's refrigerator, okay? So take that home, give it away, give it away to a coworker. Somebody at Walmart, somebody at the gas station, share that with somebody, invite them to come next week, and uh, we're going to have an awesome time. Uh, Ladies, also, don't forget, uh, Kim Tritt needs, where's Kim? I've lost her. Kim's in the back. Uh, See Kim Tritt uh, about the retreat details. Next, all that are going next Sunday, today, I've got it right now, today, following the service, if you're going on the retreat, you need to come meet with Kim. She'll probably, Kim is up here, okay? Following the service up here on my left, your right, uh, see Kim Tritt. If you're going on the retreat, she has special instructions and details for you, and uh, you're going to have a blessed time doing that. Amen? Don't forget all the things, everything else in the bulletin. Men, There's a men's meeting tomorrow night. Uh, come be a part of that. Young adults on Tuesday, 630, and uh, those are all the announcements that I have. And play practice on Saturday. Uh, if, if you're not yet involved in the play and you want to be a part of it. There's uh, plenty of parts and roles, extras that we need. And uh, see Brian over here. And I promise you this play is going to be a, a great blessing to our community. So we want to have a packed house in December. So begin to tell people about it. Let them know. And uh, w- our prayer is not only that we have a great play, um, but we see souls come to the kingdom and people uh, renew their, their walk with the Lord 
if they're backslidden or if they've walked away from God. That's the, the whole prayer and the whole heart of the play is to, is to point people to Jesus. Amen? And so we're super excited about that. Lots of uh, surprises you might find out uh, from the play, just from individuals in our church that you never knew could be so funny or uh, talented, but you will see. So, amen? Amen. I want to hand the mic over to Pastor Mike, and he's going to introduce our uh, special guest today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to be in the presence of God. Amen. And uh, appreciate everybody being here. It is good to have uh, Pastor Wayne and Margot Ritchie with us this morning. They've been with us several times. We have some, uh, several new people that, uh, how many of you are here that have never heard uh, Pastor Wayne? Let me see your hands. Man, three quarters of the house. Yeah. And that, that's exciting. Uh, just to give you just a, a short background, I, uh, after the service is over, you'll be able to get this for a donation. It's his story. Uh, that's what it's called. It says, My Story from Death to Life. Uh, Pastor Wayne, who's been in ministry for several years, uh, died. And uh, for, well, how, for how long you remember? For 63 minutes, over an hour. And God brought him back to life. <clears throat> yeah, thanks to your wife. And well, I'll let you tell the story. But he's going to preach. He's not, I don't know if he's going to tell us, but he's going to preach the word this morning. And God's been using him. Uh, he had an encounter with the Lord during that time. And the Lord gave him instructions. And every year the Lord gives him a new word as he begins to preach last year. Uh, for those of you that were, remember the last time he was here, anybody remember the word that he gave and what he was preaching about? Anybody? I can tell you. You remember, you remember the word praying forward? Remember that? Not backwards, but forward. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't look back, but pray forward. <clears throat> Can I tell you this? And you've heard me say this. I say it all the time. You know, we, in, in, uh, you know we're, we're going to have a countywide prayer gathering coming up in, in, uh, in uh, January. And uh, hopefully all the churches, as many churches as can be involved as we did last time. But the Lord has been giving me a theme about that, and it's this. And I was listening to Mike Huckabee the other day, and he, he just he said it. And it's time, you know, how many of you know this, this country is more divided than ever before? Uh, but you know why? Is, and the church, you know, the, the, the nation may be divided, but the way to, to bring a nation together is to bring the church together. Um, and we got to quit looking. We got to quit looking uh, horizontally, and look vertically. Because when you look horizontally, you think politically, and you think left and right. But when you think ver vertically, you think right and wrong. You just you just look to God for His way. So that's what we're praying. Amen. But it's good to have Pastor Wayne with us. Would you welcome him this morning as he comes? He and his wife Margot. We thank God for them. Amen. Stay here for a second. You know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12, respect those who work hard among you. Does your pastor work hard? And who are over you in the Lord? Are you over them? In the, is he over you? He's responsible for your soul. Okay? And who admonish you, which means you're doing something wrong and he's going to correct you. Hold him in the highest regard and love because of his work. Amen. 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 Next week is Pastor's Appreciation Day. <laughs> Amen. When he, when he originally... He called me about the date, and then he called me up and says, "Oh, can we? Is that date set? Because they want to do pastor's appreciation." I said, "I can do pastor's appreciation." <laughs> so I'm appreciating you, I appreciate Amen. <laughs> and next week, you guys—they're all going to appreciate you. I wish I could be here, but I won't yeah, be. I, I would love to have you. Stay. No, no, I cannot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My wife's going to come up and say a few words. Amen. Margo. She's appreciating. <laughs> It's a 
pleasure to be here um, worshiping with you. What a happy church. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so we, not, we haven't, oh, there's that word. <laughs> awesome. Um, right. And we go to a few churches, not a lot, but this is a happy church, just in case you didn't know. You guys are joyful and excited and loud, which is good, right? Make a joyful noise shout. Um, I just want to say, um, again, it's a pleasure. This is our third time here, and we're always blessed when we come. <clears throat> and um, if you talk to anybody who knows me, my favorite phrase is, and I think maybe your guys too, God is good. Amen. You know, and it's not cliche. It's not just that when, when I say it, I mean it because he is good. And here's what I've added. He's always and only good. Nothing else. Um, I'm glad that my husband is still alive. <laughs> So how many of you didn't hear my story? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to give it this morning. <laughs> basically, I dropped dead of a cardiac arrest, which is not a heart attack. Your heart basically stops. My wife found me in the living room, all nice and gray and, and ashy, whatever you call that. And then uh, she called the paramedics, and they showed up, worked on me for 48 minutes, shot me 12 times. Uh, set my wife down and told her that there's not nothing else they could do. And that's when God started me breathing again. I had no breath and no heartbeat for six, we estimate about 63 minutes. Could have been longer, we don't know. Eleven days later, I woke up in the hospital and said, where am I? Because I don't remember it. But I had an experience, a couple experiences. And it's in this little booklet here. And like he said, if you just want to give a donation, we have some for you. Also, when, when a visitor comes into your church, they sense things that you, because you're here every week, you don't sense. I noticed when I came in, all everybody greeting one another, talking to one another. I had to go through a gauntlet of people smiling trying to shake my hand, and I thought, you know, it's like, okay, well, then I guess I better smile, <laughs> right? My wife always smiles, but, you know, some of us have a hard time. But, it, but it, it's, it's, it's the presence of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord is very strong in this place. And I was at uh, Riverside last week, and I have this little, I preached a sermon in my church called Carrying a Grudge, and I had a little grudge with me. If you've never seen a grudge just pick a little toy animal and make out your grudge. But I, I had these uh, CDs, and I said at their church, I said, there are some people here that are carrying grudges, and God wants you to give them up. And I did that at the Saturday night service, and I was going to do it again at the Sunday morning service, and God said no, because... I have these CDs. I don't sell these. I give these out. And the Lord said, save them for Crossroads. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here this morning thinking, there's nobody in this place that has a grudge. But I have to be obedient to what the Lord says. You have a grudge? You have a grudge against somebody? Well, come, on, come up here. Come up here. Anybody else got a grudge against somebody? Come on up. Come on up. If you got a grudge against somebody, this is your first message. I got about six of them for you, so. Come on up. You know who can remove it, don't you? No, you. You can remove it. You can remove it. You can. You can remove it. Okay, the thing, the thing you have to understand is, huh? The thing, you have, the thing you have to understand is, the way you get rid of grudge is you forgive, right? But people tell you forgive and forget, but you can't forget. And you know why you can't forget? 
Because God doesn't want you to forget. He doesn't want you to forget what caused you to have that grudge. Why not? Because he wants to use it for his glory and for your glory and so that you can, you can minister to somebody else. You can minister to somebody else about how to remove a grudge. So therefore, the memory of it doesn't go away. So how do you get rid of a grudge? You forgive, but how do well, we don't? We have to understand what forgiveness means. The Bible says it doesn't go away. The grudge and the hurt doesn't go away. Okay, so take this. Okay, that's your grudge, right? Now, just picture me as the Lord. Okay. Now, that's your hurt. Okay, you give that to me. Whatever. No, you don't. Okay, now, hold on to it. Now, if you hold on to it, you didn't give it to me. Now, give it to me. Now, whose who's hurt and grudge is it? It's mine now. And another thing people understand is God repays. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord, I will repay. Okay? So, do you want to repay the person, or do you want God to repay the person? I don't want to be paid. I want their eyes open. Okay. I want to change, and they can't change. Okay, but what about, we're talking about you. You have the, gr you have the grudge. Okay? Yeah. So, you give it to Jesus, it to Jesus, and you leave it in his hands. And you forgive. And another thing of, no, no, they won't. But God loves people. He doesn't hurt people. Yeah. See, under, get to understand that when God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, he repays from a standpoint of love. Yeah. We have a problem, but we pay from a standpoint of hate. Yeah. And God, net, God does not. And a lot of reason a lot of people don't want to give it up is because they know God will, punish, will repay from a standpoint of love. Okay, so we don't want to do it. So, and what another thing is, have you, have you ever forgiven this person? But have you forgiven them? Have you forgiven them? I say I've forgiven them, but I still find myself getting mad at them. Okay, which is normal. Forgiveness is a choice. It is not a feeling. So if you choose to forgive, you break down the dam that's holding you back and the blessings of the Lord that God wants to give you, okay? So, when you say you forgive, you're, who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to yourself, or are you going to listen to yourself? Huh? Who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to yourself, or are you going to listen to yourself? Right? Who do you listen to? You listen to yourself? Okay, now there's one part of you that listens, that's current, and then there's the rest of you that's the past. And the disadvantage is, my past has 71 years on me. It knows how I'm going to work, it knows how I'm going to think, it knows the things that I planned, and it works to stop me from doing what I know God wants me to do. So when I say I forgive, my past says, you, you can't do that. You got, you got hurt a lot. But you say I forgive, and the hurt comes back, and it keeps coming back. And the thing about hurt is it can feel just as strong 20 years later. You have the exact same feelings, if not stronger, 20 years after an event, because all it takes is something to stir that up, and the devil wants to do that. The devil wants to stir that up in you. So the Lord says, you chose to forgive. You made the decision. You give, you give it over to me. You allow me to do what I need to do. You have chosen. You have spoken the words, I forgive, and the Lord will do what he desires to do completely and fully. Amen. I'll come back to you later, okay? No, you're not. Nobody's hard case. Did you forgive the person? No. Okay.
You want to? Yeah, I, I want to. Okay, yeah. then. Bow your head. So, Jesus. Jesus. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I turn this hurt. I turn this hurt. Over to you. Over to you. And I release it. And I release it. In your care. In your care. Knowing that you. Knowing that you. In your love. In your love. Will take the vengeance. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. I will repay, that you will repay this, but I will allow you to repay it in the way that you want to repay it. Say that. Um, I will allow you to repay it. I will allow you to repay it. In the way you want to pray it. In the way you want to pray it. Now, do you feel like you've forgiven? Not yet. No. It's, it's not a feeling. You're not going to feel like you forgave. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. You chose to forgive this morning. So anytime yourself, how old are you? 24. Anytime the last 24 years tells you you haven't done it, you tell yourself that you did it. Okay? There you go. And what about you? Have you chosen to forgive? Okay. So you're, you're still carrying a grudge for this person? Which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Like how they want them hurt? Like no, no, no. I but you, you don't. Know. And I keep moving forward, but I don't even recognize that that was. Remind, remember what they did? Remember what they yeah, did. that's you talking to you. No, the devil talks to me. No, that's. that's <laughs> the devil uses, the devil uses, but, it, but the devil uses you to talk to you, is what he does. He tries to stir up memories, and every, they see, the devil works based on emotions. So he stirs up the memory, which stirs up the emotions, which tells you that you haven't forgiven. But it's a good thing that each time you say, I forgive. Amen? You're making progress. That's what counts. Here you go. Okay, now do you accept the fact that uh, you have the power to forgive or not forgive? That you, can, that you can do it? I can do it, but they keep doing things on a daily basis. That Which is another, another problem. Yeah. If, if, you, if somebody does something to you and it stops and you forgive, it's easier to go on. But if you forgive that person and the situation continues, then what do you do? Well, I wasn't really asking. I was asking what, right, which is what you should do, okay? The Lord sees every situation, okay? If you forgive, that doesn't mean that there's going to be a reconciliation. Yes, I understand. There's a difference. So you choose to forgive, but does wisdom tell you, does wisdom tell you how to respond. So you, t you take it to the Lord and you say, Lord, I, I release this unto you. I need you to take care of this situation. I need you to put an end to this situation. However you choose to do it, I will allow you to do that. Can you pray that? Yes. Okay. Here you go. I also bowed my head down. Really? I was in a coma for 28 days and I was with Guardian Angels. Amen. Amen. And set me back. Amen. And it hurt to go back in my body. I uh, was recovering from the surgery I died from. Amen. I my bowel ruptured and I had septic hyphen. <laughs> Amen. And you're here. Yeah. I was Amen. A boy that drowned in his own pool of piss. Amen. And I woke up, I asked where he was, and he was in the Arnold Palmer Hospital in Orlando. They sent him in. Amen. And both of us were on vents. Amen. Did anybody else here die and come back to life? You know, every, every, when I died and came back, the Lord kind of said to me that that's going to be, become more and more common. More and more common. You can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. And almost every church I go to, 
Almost every church I go to, there's somebody that, that was dead and came back to life. So it's, it's, it's amazing what God is doing. But the message I have for you this morning is, who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Okay? The Bible says, don't become dull of hearing. Now, dull of hearing refers to spiritual things. But dull of hearing doesn't mean you don't hear. It means you're not paying attention to what has been said or you don't respond to what has been said in the way God wants you to respond. And the Bible also says you are to remember, okay? To remember does not mean you log it in your brain. It means how you react to something. To remember, Okay, so this is, this is where you're at. This is your life, okay? The thing about it is there's all kinds of things that we can remember. We try to forget, and we can't because God won't let us. God won't let us forget the hurts. God won't let us forget, let us forget the discouragements. God won't let us forget those things. Okay? Now, sometimes we think that they won't let us forget those things. Well, he won't let us either. But God wants to use those. God wants to use those for his benefit. And the thing you have to do is you have to forgive yourself. Okay? You have to forgive yourself. Okay? Now, this church has an awesome presence of the Holy Spirit. And we talk about, and your pastor mentioned it, what's going on around us in our country. And I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to read all the way down to verse 11. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start with verse 11, then we'll go back up. I teach a, we call it Sunday school class, but it's uh, got about 20 people, and most of them are qualified to be teachers themselves. So, but about 12 weeks ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, I want, to, I want you to start a study on this verse, and I will give you thoughts. And I've gone through about 12 different lessons. I never know what I'm going to do. This coming Sunday, I don't know what I'm going to do. But God gives me thoughts. I've done things like life, have kingdom citizenship. Uh, your authority, prophetic prayer, prophesying, and subjects like that. And he's given me a whole list of other things. But it says in here, what God said to me was, encourage one another and build each other up. And in some translations, it says, encourage, comfort, and build each other up. We are entering a stage in our country where we are going to be the ones that, if we're not there already, that need to encourage, comfort, and build up. So he starts in verse 1. Now, brethren, about times and dates, I don't need to write to you about them. You all know the Lord's coming, right? You know well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Verse 3, while people are saying peace and safety. What's going on in our colleges? What kind of zones do they want in our colleges? They want safe zones. Now, they want peace, but they want peace on their terms. They don't want you around them. They don't, want, they don't want Christians on campus. They don't want Christian speakers. They don't want those things. They, they want their safe space so they don't have to, have to listen to an op opposing point of view. Be a Christian and I don't care if you're liberal or conservative, be a Christian and go to a college campus and see how they treat you, okay? Uh, our president, whether you like him or dislike him, had a meeting with a racist group. Did you know that? And they really criticized. You know what that race of group, race of, race of group was? 
focus on the family. The news accused him of, of being racist because he, he, he went and visited this hate group, which was focused on the family. It's labeled as a hate group. They want peace and they want safety. And they're doing everything they can to get it. And they want peace and safety from us and from God is what they want. Okay? But what's going to happen is sudden destruction. Okay? Destruction will come on them suddenly. Okay? Now, do you want peace and safety? The Bible says pray for your government so they'll leave you alone. Did you know that? So you can live a quiet life without being bothered by them. The laws have been passed and not allowing that to happen. Okay? In Canada, if you preach against homosexuality, you can be put in prison. You can be put in jail for that. Okay? They want peace and they want safety and they're doing everything they can destructively to bring that about. But destruction will come upon them as labor pains, which means it will be a process. It will take time, and they will not escape. But you, you're not in darkness. So this day should surprise you like a thief, okay? You are the sons and daughters of the light and of the day. This church is a light. You are a light. But your light right now is only shining inside this building. Your light has to go outside this building. As your assistant pastor said, that was your assistant pastor, right? Take this flyer out. Don't pull up on your refrigerator. Take it out and give it out to somebody. Okay? Spread your light. Okay? You, forget, you, have, a, you have a hurt. You have a pain. Your neighbor has a hurt. Your neighbor has a pain. You can emphasize. You, you can whatever. I can't think of the word. Huh? empathize with them. And you could say to them, you know, Jesus can heal that hurt because he healed mine. And when they tell you their story, it will stir up memories of your story, which is what God wants so that you could share with them how much God has done for you. I used to have a grudge. Okay? You know the thing about Christians who have grudges is most of the time it's, it's, it's for a good reason. It's not for some ungodly reason. It's you're hurt by somebody, somebody you love, somebody you trusted. Okay? We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep. Are you a sleep Christian or are you an awake Christian? Okay? Don't be like others who are asleep. How does a, how does a sleep person act? They don't know what's going on around them. Right? When you're asleep, you don't know what's going on around you. You have no idea. Okay? You sleep in your bedroom. You get up. Half the stuff in your house is missing because somebody broke in, but you didn't know he was there because you were asleep, and he was very good about keeping quiet. So let's be alert. Let's be alert, and let's be self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day... Let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Faith and love as a breastplate. And the hope of salvation as our helmet. Do you know when a Roman soldier dressed themselves, the one item they did not put on themselves was their helmet? Their commander put it on. You do not put your helmet of salvation on. The Lord put it on for you. But you put on everything else. Okay? You put on the breastplate. You put on the, feet, the shoes. You put all that. You pick up your sword. 
But the commander is the one that puts the helmet on your head. Christ put the helmet of salvation upon you. For God did not appoint you to suffer wrath. Okay? God did not appoint you to suffer wrath. We have a gentleman in our church. His name is Dan. He went to a uh, IHOP, International House of Prayer Conference in Spokane, Washington, where it all started from John G. Lake. One time, Spokane was the most healthy city in America. And he goes to this conference, and he's out in the morning. He's going for a walk, and he has his headphones on, listening to Christian music. And there's this lady that starts hissing at him. And she hisses so loud that he can hear her even with his headphones on. And she lunges towards him. And all at once, she gets like this, all at once, she bounces back. Lands, lands on her, uh, I don't want to say it, land on her behind, okay. She lands there, and he looks at her, and she's all confused, okay. Did God do that? I think so. God has not appointed us for wrath, and we are at a point where we need to trust the Lord that he's going to take care of us. But we receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, so whether we are awake Christian or an asleep Christian, we may live together with him and may I say with one another. There are people around you that are hurting. There are people around you that would come into this church this morning and be totally fearful, wanting to run the other way because the devil who controls their life, doesn't want them in here. He doesn't want them to see how friendly you are. He doesn't want them to see how, how well you, you respect each other and how well you treat one another. He doesn't, want to, he doesn't want them to see that. He doesn't want them to hear the word that's been said. He doesn't want that. They're, 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 he will do what he can to keep them away from coming to see what you have. So you have to take what you have out there. You have to let people see that. People need to know, and people need to learn. And, and the Bible says that God added to the church daily. Let God, and God wants to add to this church. Okay? Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Now, I preached that sermon pray forward, not backwards, because about 2010, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know what your problem has been for the last seven years? You've been praying backwards. I said, what do you mean praying backwards? He said, I want you to, he said, you got to quit praying backwards. You got to start praying forward. So I'm thinking, well, how do you pray backwards? Because you're praying about things that I've already done and that God cannot correct things. There are a lot of things God cannot correct, but he will redeem them. He will use them. A man in our church was totally addicted to pornography, completely 100%. He stands up in front of our men group and talks about his addiction and how God delivered him and how he can't even have a TV in his house because he knows that he would go right back into it. He has to be very careful what he, what he watches, where he goes, what he does, what he hears. And he's standing in front of a group of men, giving his testimony, and he makes a statement, if any of you need help with sexual addiction, come and see me. Now, does he remember all that? Yes. But God is using that. Okay? And he didn't say come up, up front. He said come see me privately. Okay? God uses that. So God wants to use what you've gone through as a blessing and a ministry to somebody else. He wants to do that. Amen. A few people. So memory, as I said, is what leads us to action. That action either brings life or death, not only for you, but for those connected with you. 
Remember, it is so critical that God sent the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name to help us remember. Because remember, as I say, it leads to action. Okay? It leads to action. And you know, memory guards you. Did you know that? I'm walking down the street in 2017, and I get tempted about something, and it feels real, you know, I think, well, I might want to do that. But then my memory tells me, remember back in the year 2000, we did the same thing, and all the, all the lies and the misery and all the hurt that you caused? So why do you want to do it again? See, memory is good, but memory is also bad because in a sense... You're standing here, and God says, I want you to do something. And, you, and your memory pops up and says, well, you can't do that. God can't use you. And you got a lot of other people telling you that God can never use you again. Okay? So that memory, the devil is using that memory. So your memory either holds you back from doing what God wants or propels you into doing what God wants. You determine, if I Allow God to use my memory for his glory. Then I will go forward. So I had to stop praying backwards and start praying forwards. I had, I had to start expecting things in my future and forgetting the things in my past. Okay? Now, the Bible talks about some of the things to remember. And I won't give you the scriptures. You can look these up. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done for you. Remember the poor. Remember what you have received and heard. Remember his benefits. Remember your creator. Remember the deeds that the Lord has done, period, for everybody. Remember the wonders of God. Remember the desperate situation you were in before you got saved. Okay? You think it's bad now. It was a lot worse when you weren't serving the Lord. Remember his love for you. Remember Jesus was raised from the dead for you. Now, I hear an interesting comment. Um, and your pastor brought it up this morning, so I'm going to bring it up. Lazarus. Dead four days in the grave. So somebody asked me the question, why did Jesus weep? Why did Jesus weep? And they had, but this guy had a very good answer. He said, when you die, where do you, he asked me a question, when you die, where do you go? So I'm asking you, when you die, where do you go? This guy's in heaven for four days. And Jesus calls him back to the world of sin and Jesus was sad that he had to bring Lazarus back. I thought, that's interesting. I never heard of it before. I don't know if I agree with that or not. But he said that's why Jesus wept, because he knew he had to bring him back to earth. I knew a pastor that died on his deathbed, and they were around his bed praying, and they began to pray, and God brought him back to life. He said, what are you guys doing? I was in heaven. I don't want to come back here. Now, I didn't get in heaven, by the way. So I got close to it, but I didn't get in it. Okay? Remember the prophetic words spoken by the apostles. Remember the lessons you have received and heard. Okay. There are two books that are written about you. One is the book you write. There's also other books. Everybody else writes a book about you. People write all kinds of books about you. But let's focus on these two. You write a book about your life, okay? But God is also writing a book about your life. Now, in turn me to Genesis chapter 18, verses 12 to 15. And I will finish up with this. Genesis chapter 18, 12 to 15. Then we'll go to Hebrews 11. I have no idea what time it is. Genesis 18. This is a book that God kept for a lady named Sarah. Okay? 
Genesis 18, 12 to 15. Let's start with verse 10. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself. Now, English does not ju bring justice to this word. It really says she mocked with laughter. Her mocking, she was mocking what God said, okay? She thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you. The point in time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Ma'am, I'm coming back to you. The Lord says nothing is impossible. Nothing is too hard. I can do things that you don't think I can do. You just have to have the faith that I'm going to do them. Yes. Nothing is impossible. And if nothing is impossible, then everything is possible. Right? There are some other people here that think in a situation in their life, they think God, th that it's impossible. But God's telling you this morning, nothing is impossible. And it's possible because nothing is impossible. Okay? So why did, is anything too hard for the Lord? I return a point in time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid. You mock the Lord, you have fear. Fear led to lying. And she said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Now, when it says that she did this, she basically, uh, now, I don't know if she, if she did it to the Lord or to Abraham, but I think, I think it was more to Abraham. So Abraham comes to her and says to her, you know, God said this is going to happen, and you laughed. But the indication is by her denying it, she actually started crying, bawling, doing everything she could to convince her husband that she was, that what God said, God did not say. So in other words, I'm not the liar, God is. Okay? You're, he's lying. Who tells you God's lying to you? The devil tells you that. And let me tell you something else. God speaks in a still, small voice. The devil shouts. What are all these groups doing that want to have peace and safety? How do they get what they want? They shout. It's interesting. The ACLU, which we think is very liberal, is having a conference. And this group comes in and shouts down the speaker. They shout. The devil shouts very loud. God speaks very softly. Now, that's, that's Sarah's book, and we get to see it. But now turn over to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Hebrews 11, 11. We'll read God's book. We'll read what God said about it. Okay? Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah, herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he confessed his faithfulness to have made the promise, okay? So Sarah believed, okay? She was, found, and, and she was found faithful, okay? I don't know if that's the right reference or not. By faith, Sarah, it's not the right verse. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child and when she was past the age because she judged God to be faithful who had promised. See, 
The problem we have is we have our own book and we read it a lot. We got to stop reading our own book and start reading God's book. And according to 1 Corinthians 13, God keeps no record of what? Wrong. So God's book with your name on it does not have anything you did wrong in it. So start reading God's book. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this church. Thank you for your presence that's strong in this place. Thank you for what you did this morning. If there's anything else, Lord, you desire to do, just let me know. But I want to encourage you as a congregation that God is well pleased with you, that he wants to use you in this time when the world around us is crying. They want their peace and their safety away from Christians, away from the things of God. God says he wants to begin to use you, and he wants you to go out there and encourage and build up and comfort and strengthen others. And also, if a brother or sister in your midst is hurting, he wants you to do that. He wants to bless you. He wants, he wants to expand your knowledge. He wants you to listen only to him. As the devil shouts louder and louder and louder, God wants you to not hear. He wants you to be dull to what the devil is saying. As your pastor said, stop looking horizontally. Start looking vertically. It's not a matter of a political party. It's a matter of what's right and what's wrong. And know that you live in a day and age when that which is evil is called good and that which is good is called evil. But you maintain yourself in the Lord and God will deliver you and God will protect you and God will keep you in the things that he desires to do. Thank you for this, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, blessing upon these people prosperity upon these people, blessing upon this church, prosperity upon this church, blessing upon the leadership, prosperity upon the leadership. We just thank you for this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.